Friday, August 3rd, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a very huge dust storm that actually engulfed southeast Phoenix last night. Uh, this is a video I took. As you can see, this thing stretches from basically horizon to horizon, at least from a close perspective, probably 10, 15, maybe 20 miles wide, realistically. Very tall, thick plume. Uh, it's not necessarily a plume. They call these a wall of dust, a uh, haboob by native terms, but it was a very thick, long duration dust storm. In the Western Valley, this was sent to me by Magpie through ABC 15. And as you can see, they got pelted with some heavy rain and even some hail in the West Valley. High winds, um, which this, in my humble opinion, is a little easier to deal with as long as it doesn't get too strong. Uh, and then it is that dust. That dust, I'm telling you, just wreaks havoc on everything. You can't go outside. Uh, not that you would go outside during a severe thunderstorm anyway, but it's something simple as your air conditioner coils that are outside. You know, there's millions that just through a dust storm like this, millions of homes that their air conditioner coils need cleaned. And, and the majority of people may not remember to do it, forget to do it. And then that, um, you know, makes your AC unit have to work that much harder. And 110 degree heat, supposed to be 110 degrees today. So those are things that are kind of maybe overlooked. Those are side effects of these big, huge storms. Air filters on cars. Every car that was on a freeway during this storm, whether it be a freeway or a side road that drove through this storm, now their filters on their cars. Every single filter needs changed or at least cleaned really good because they're full of dust and dirt. So just, you know, like this morning, I went outside at uh, 5 a.m. and was rinsing off everything out back like I do every single time after these dust storm events because, like I said, they wreak havoc on communities in a lot of different ways and people, pets, you know, they take their toll on uh, your upper respiratory, your sinuses. They're just uh, very tough to deal with, I think, personally. And I would rather deal with a foot of snow than I would one giant dust storm like that. But in the Western Valley, um, they saw some high winds and rain, which rain washes the dust out of the atmosphere. Um, so a little different scenario there, but that's over in West Phoenix that was sent in by Magpie through ABC 15. You can see some hail bouncing in the swimming pool there. What we're looking at now is this gigantic dust cloud that's been traveling across the Atlantic Ocean. We've been watching this very closely for the last four, maybe five days. It's now approaching the uh, small island chains of Dominica, Guadalupe, St. Croix, this is Barbados, and some of the webcams I was looking at this morning, I was trying to get a look at the eastern sunrise. Can't find any that work at the moment, but this is going to be a long duration event. You can see this is a very large, thick cloud that's moving, let's say, at 10 miles per hour. It's going to take about a week to fully cross these islands. So there's going to be some spectacular sunrises and sunsets. But one thing that they're going to have to contend with is that dust. It's not going to be as severe as what we saw out here in Phoenix last night. But nevertheless, the uh, atmosphere is going to be fairly loaded with dust particulates like you're seeing here. And we've talked about this and now it has arrived. It's arrived. It's made its way to Spain. This dust storm is moving north. It's covering the entire globe in some capacity. It's much like Mars. And even if you research the Mars dust storm, it even uh, goes on to say from the experts that the dust storm that engulfs Mars originates from one place on Mars. The dust storm that's um, on Earth right now is originating from one place, and that's the Sahara Desert. So they have that in common. And as you can see, this dust is very thick. This is from uh, yesterday afternoon, and you can see this is a webcam that I did find that worked in uh, coastal Spain, and you can see it's looking to the north, but this is west, and the sunset with a uh, very dark red sunset, that's from the sand, from the Sahara. That was last night, uh, August 2nd, and then we'll see this morning, August 3rd, 
over here in the eastern. We can kind of get a look at the northeastern sky, but it's equally, if not more red, here you go, orangish red. That's the sand from the Sahara, visible in Spain on webcams, 8-3. In fact, there's a lot of it this morning, and they'll probably see even more. And that's what they can expect down in the uh, Lesser Antilles, the, the island chain down there. Be seen exactly like this. Maybe not quite as uh, thick as they're seeing up in Spain, but we can take a look by comparison. You can see up in Spain, at least on the northwestern edge of Spain, in fact, the entire western and part of the south, central, are seen uh, thick, in some cases very thick areas of dust. So that will enhance the sunrises and sunsets, um, takes its toll on your upper respiratory and your sinuses, so just be aware of that. This here will be a long duration event across the Lesser Antilles. Don't know where it's going to go from there, but this has um, grown to 2,000 plus miles wide. If it trends north up into the Gulf of Mexico, well then this is what we can expect in about a week, week and a half. This is going to take probably the better part of a week, maybe eight days or so, to fully uh, get past the small island chain, the Lesser Antilles, going up into the South Caribbean, possibly up into the Gulf of Mexico, maybe partially out into the Eastern Pacific. Nobody really knows at this point because the weather patterns can change. The jet streams, or not jet streams, but the upper level winds that steer these things can change. So right now they've been on the same heading for several days, so don't look for much change in the future. This dust storm, like Mars, is originating from one place, the Western Sahara, and it's starting to reach farther north. That's a very thick plume that's engulfing Spain right now, and I'm sure it will not stay limited to Spain. It will probably make its way up into the UK in the coming days, France, Northern Europe. They've already seen a long extension of this dust go up through Norway and Sweden. So it's definitely making the rounds. It's covering both hemispheres, pretty much the entire globe. The green is dust particulates. The tan is just a thicker aspect of the same dust. Very, very thick. And that's an exceptionally large dust cloud. In fact, that's huge. The biggest one we've seen. And we've been following this now for over a month. Pretty incredible, guys. Quick update on Hurricane Hector. Still on the same heading. As you can see right now, it is a Category 2. Once it gets closer to the Hawaiian Islands, then they'll send out the Hurricane Reconnaissance planes that take all kinds of uh, measurements with regard to data that tell us the strength and how this uh, storm is developing one way or the other. Right now, these are just satellite estimates, and it's showing a Category 2, strengthening to a Category 3 now, remaining a Category 3 for three days. Actually, yeah, three days. Better part of uh, two and a half anyway. And then getting closer to the Hawaiian Islands. There's Hawaii, and it's on pretty much a direct path. Most of the models are in agreement that it's going to come somewhere near the Hawaiian Islands. Don't know exactly where. If it stays south and comes up from the south, it will be stronger. Historically, that's what's happened. There's only been a few hurricanes that have ever made it this far, and the ones, I think two that came up from the south were stronger than the ones that came across more along the 20 degree north parallel, because the water is just a little bit cooler up there. But remember, as we get closer to the, especially the Big Island, the water has to be warmer along the coastlines because of the lava entry um, that's been going on there for many, many weeks. So if it slows down as it gets close to the Big Island, then we could see some sort of a possible transformation of this storm because the waters uh, are incredibly warm off the coast. So anyway, guys, that's the update on Hurricane Hector. Heading still the same, uh, except I don't see the Category 4 in here. Yesterday I showed a Category 4. There's no longer a Category 4, so the models are changing and will continue to change. But right now, the heading still showing uh, Hawaii rendezvous in about five days. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.